Well, how should you pray for your future husband, we were asked. And I would add to that the word future. If you're praying for your future husband, you're tending to potentially give the energy of delay or in some unknown uh, time out there in the front that's undefined and not concrete it's just like floating around out there mm -hmm. but if you pray for your husband as in the here and now recognizing that he already exists mm -hmm. you're going to give off a different energy and tap into the type of faith that believes for something now as it already exists like god told abraham i've made you a father of many nations long before he had any children right mm -hmm. so god's language and our tapping into faith in God's word and his promises has to do with believing things as if they already were because technically your husband already exists or your wife right mm -hmm. so how did you pray for me as your husband back in the day yeah. or how would you recommend the ladies out there pray for their husbands good question if they're still single and looking um in 2016 when I was still single I spoke with a couple that were married and they gave me a great advice so they said your husband already exists like jesse already mentioned and you are the only one that knows how to pray over him and so i want to point out not pray for him as i'm going to give you an example versus over him because he needs your prayers now and you need to start your prayer love life over your husband right now so <clears throat> instead of praying father please bring me this man who is this and this and this and this and that and make him be this and that and you know things like that make him tall dark and handsome yeah or <laughs> you know, even his qualities like please father can you do can you make him like that versus Father, I thank you for my husband. I pray blessings over his day. I pray that he will be a blessing to others and he will experience blessings from others, that his meetings will go well, that he is in good, joyful um, mood today, that he is walking in victory. I pray protection over him. I pray that he is fulfilling his mission today. I pray that we are in deep connection with each other as a husband and wife that we are we both help each other support each other we help each other develop in spiritual physical emotional and mental father i thank you that he is active and he loves to exercise and father thank you that he loves to eat healthy and he's healthy body mind and spirit Thank you, Father, that he loves you above all things. And he spends time with you to read your word, to study your word, to pray and worship you, uh, to pray and worship you and praise you. And thank you that he is a great husband. He loves me. He cherishes me. He's gentle, kind and loving. He's strong and manly and attends to my needs. I thank you, Father, that he's a great father. He loves our children and he raises them well. Thank you that he is a great leader, that he is uh, leading us as a family, that he's leading others in his business and he loves what he does. Thank you, Father, that we minister to other married couples or to singles and help them find the right partner, help them to be in the right mindset and the beliefs and bring them tools. Thank you that he loves to minister to man and help them as well. And that was my prayer. Continue whatever comes to mind at that time. I would just pray those things that I'm sensing for that day. So as I was driving to work, that was my prayer. And that was way, way, way before we even knew about each other. Yeah. And you basically what she was doing was prophesying over me yeah and she was shaping me and molding me through her prayers mm -hmm. back then even mm -hmm. and so 
I remember back in 2016, you said that was the year you started to pray yeah. for your husband? Yeah, in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's the year I moved to Montana. They needed a school teacher. And it also started a newfound era and season in my life where I started becoming seeking to become more intentional about mm -hmm. getting married mm -hmm. and tapping into things like remember there was an elder uh, who has since passed away he was uh, uh, nigh well uh, disabled to a degree but he was still able to get around but he was a prayer warrior and I met with him every Saturday for a whole year and to pray for a, a wife he prayed with me over me and for me and for mm -hmm. her and you know there's a lot there's other things that happen details i won't share as far as you know things that i experienced that uh plans that didn't you know go through but all of my development in those four years in montana were very purposeful mm -hmm. now that i can look back on it that tied into preparing me for a wife mm -hmm. and so Four years after that, yeah, we met and got married. And so I wanted to point this out to you ladies. <clears throat> when you're praying over your husband, you're praying from your heart and from the desires that you have. So when Jesse and I met, he is fit, has healthy, he loves healthy food and healthy lifestyle. He exercises he loves to spend time with God and study his word and worship him and pray. And so all of the things that I was praying is in him. And then interesting, because I didn't know this, but it was kind of spiritually prophetic, prophetically that I was praying that we are going to be ministering or helping young married couples or singles to prepare for marriage. That was not even... In, in my dreams, it was not my vision at all, but that was, I was feeling that. So whatever I felt, I was praying. And that's what we do now. I would also encourage the ladies to pray over your husband for freedom. Yeah. That he can stand strong in the faith mm -hmm. and resist the temptations out there mm -hmm. and overcome them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily pray for him to not be tempted but rather that he overcomes temptation. Mm -hmm. You'll have a stronger husband that way. I would rather see, I would trust someone further who has overcome temptation mm -hmm. or gotten victory over someone, yeah. something, rather than someone who's never been exposed to temptation, never had opportunity to become victorious in a certain area of life. Because mm -hmm. they haven't been tried, they haven't been tested. They could, that, that muscle of, of standing strong and saying no and resisting temptation and or overcoming things hasn't been exercised. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that a lot with, in my culture of previously uh, Amish people, uh, especially the young boys. They have not been exposed to the things of the world. And then they decide to leave. And the world just eats them up, chews them up, and spits them out. And they have no resistance to temptation because mm -hmm. they've never had opportunity to, to confront everything that's out there to say no to, right? So mm -hmm. there's that too. Yeah. And for for men, you use the same thing to pray over your spouse, over your future wife. and Or your wife rather than future. Wife. No, well, I'm saying future, but you're not praying for my future wife. Yeah. Just to, to, to keep this clear. And again, each day you will have more and other things to pray about. You will have some things that come to you and just know that... God will bring you knowledge and bring you wisdom and understanding of how to pray, what to say, what are the things that you you wanted to even, like Jesse was saying, certain temptations come. I would pray for strength, pray for uh, wisdom in certain days more so than others. And it's amazing. I feel like you're already creating that connection with your spouse not even knowing who they are or where, where they are, but God knows. Countless times during my days of singlehood, mm -hmm. I sensed the, a sudden move of God's presence in my environment at the, in that specific moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything special 
it's just like suddenly I feel like it just sensed somebody prayed for me. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea who prayed for me. Could mm -hmm. have been you. Yeah. But I sense sense those moments where I just sensed that somebody was somebody had or was praying for me. No idea who it was, mm -hmm. aside from God, you know, showing me. I mm -hmm. didn't know. So there's that always to consider when you pray for the person that you will be marrying is to recognize they already exist. They're mm -hmm. going to feel the effects of your prayers. They won't necessarily be able to identify the source mm -hmm. and all that, but you're shaping and molding that spouse that, that you want to marry someday. Yeah. It's easy to get lazy and not pray for that person mm -hmm. because we as humans, we're so conditioned to think, well, if I can't see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, smell it, mm -hmm. then it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, and we don't think about it. Mm -hmm. and however that's the very thing that you know if, if you're believing for something you're going to treat it as if it already was even though you can't see it mm -hmm. okay so that's the principle we want to really zero in on yeah and avoid futuristic terminology when you're praying for mm -hmm. your spouse mm -hmm. use here and now the person already exists you just haven't met yet but you want to pray for them like as if you already were in a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this helps. It is a powerful tool and use it, enjoy it, have fun with it. And let us know in the comments if you've done that, if you're going to do it, what are you going to do? And if you've done it, if you have results and testimony to share, share with us. We would like to hear from you. All right. That's it for now. Be blessed.